obviously we're just um yeah so i guess we could just it's just seven o'clock so we'll just give give everyone what a minute and then i'll start the ball rolling yeah uh, of course and then obviously i don't want to keep people waiting too long and i'm just conscious of time and so we want to get as much in this session as possible um so if you're just joining us welcome um i can't see you but hopefully you can see me and hear me um have we got a chat on here somewhere I can't even see the chat. How oh, can you not? No. I can't hear anything, are they? Yeah. You'll have to let me know if there's any questions or. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on all of that for you. So, should we? Um, should we make a start? Yeah, absolutely fine. Okay. Are you ready? Right. Well, look, to whoever whoever's out there, because this is anonymous, I can't see you. Um, thank you uh, for joining and, and welcome and. Um, you know, I just want to provide some useful information tonight, provide value uh, and to, to make people aware of uh, what's going on in the estate agency industry and, and give a, a perspective for you to consider. Um, so I'm just going to run through some slides. Um, I'm going to make it fairly snappy, fairly quick, I'm just conscious of everyone's time. And um, I mean, obviously, there is a massive subject to cover and, and maybe even just one of these slides I could spend an hour talking about. But I'm not going to have time to go into much detail. I just want to go into um, get through as much content today as we possibly can to give you as much value um, as we can. So let's make a start. Um, I'm assisted by my able assistant, James Rowe. Um, James uh, is going to help me this evening. And uh, we'll talk to James to say a little bit later. Unless there's anything you want to say now, James? No, absolutely fine. I'm going to sink into the background. OK, right, well, let's, let's make a start. So I just want to go through what I'm going to cover tonight. Um, I'll give you a bit of an introduction about myself in a second. I want to talk about the, the future of a state agency um, and, you know, the traditional model, the, the, self, uh, the self-employed model, and the, you know, the low-cost you know, online model. Um, and perhaps give a bit of a, uh, information about the self-employed model, uh, educate people on what that's about. Um, people, you know, may be interested to know a little bit more about that talk about the advantages and disadvantages what people can earn and obviously the important part is you know what are the costs involved in, in starting your own business <clears throat> i'm now starting to lose my voice so uh, i've been talking all day um <clears throat> so just excuse me coughing so i'd also go through things to consider if you're thinking about uh, becoming a self-employed estate agent um, why you could look at considering us as the property experts as an option and talk about our mission, our core values, and, and answer any questions that people might have. I just want to uh, reiterate here that this is not a sales pitch. I, I really just want to provide value and give an explanation on the self-employed model so people are more aware of it. I'm just conscious that some people may already be <clears throat> considering the self-employed model. Some may, so maybe some business owners that want to change their model. Um, but you know, this this is a a business opportunity that people might be interested in, in looking at and finding out more about. So, <clears throat> so a bit about me. <clears throat> and I started as an estate agent in 1986. I want to quickly dust over that because that sounded like a long time ago. Um, someone's probably busy working out, you know, when that was, how many years ago that was, too long ago. So I set up my own business a couple of years later. So I started with Countrywide and uh, then I set up my own business in 1988. We changed the self-employed model in 2008, and we won various awards, you know, local awards, regional awards, national awards, including a, a best state in the UK, and it was recently branded to the property experts in January this year. Um, that was a picture of the old office we had. Um, so I'm going the wrong way now, going back, let's go forward. So I've also got other businesses as well. So I've got a license uh, to trade as fine a country in, in this area, you can see on that map there, it's uh, the sort of Midlands area, but it just goes far north as South Manchester, down to um, you know, Oxfordshire and down to Windsor and, and there's a couple of areas in, in London. I've got 50 self-employed agents uh, within that area uh, and we're looking to increase that to over 100 by the end of this year. So if you're interested in, in joining Finding Country in that area, then we can, uh, I'll give you something to talk to about that. Um, but finding country, just worth adding that that is a license. I've got a license for that area, and there are different license holders in you know across the UK. There's 225 different locations, and they will all have different models. So 
In our area, it's a self-employed model. In other areas, it may not be, it might be an employed model. Um, but even whether you're interested in self-employed or employed, then there will be someone to talk to at the end if you want to know more about that and how it works. Um, but that's one of our businesses. I've got another business, which is called the Mortgage Experts, where we've got 40 self-employed mortgage advisors. Uh, again, we can increase that to 100 by the end of this year. And uh, I've got a national online auction business as well for the auction company. Um, and that's enough about me. So let's talk about the future of estate agency. Um, the first model is obviously the traditional estate agency model. And I believe that that is no longer viable. And when I talk about this, you know, the traditional model, I'm talking about, you know, the high street office with an employed manager, an employed lister or a valuer, a couple of employed sales negotiators and administrator. Um, because of the costs of the rents, you know, seem to be increasing. And it's not just the rents, it's all the add-ons, it's the rates, which can be equally as high. It's all the utility bills, you know, they've gone up. Um, and it's all the equipment you've got to buy. You've got to have a photocopier and a franking machine, and you've got to have, um, I don't know, air conditioning units, fire extinguishers. And it's just at the cost of buying all those things. You've got to have all those things serviced. You've got to have service and the air conditioning service and the franking machine service and the photocopier service and the, the fire alarm service and the smoke alarms and the fire extinguisher service. It's all those extra costs. And then something goes wrong with the premises. Then you've got right moves putting their prices up and Zoopla and on the market. Um, and, you know, you've got to run websites and then people are off ill. And, you know, it's just a lot, you know, that traditional model is, I just don't believe it's viable anymore. And, and you can see in the news recently, we've just had, you know, Douglas and Gordon uh, going into liquidation. Um, and there's, a, there's an article, this was from last year, about 900 estancy branches have closed over the last six months. Um, and that's going to be increasing this year. That was over a year ago. So I think it'll be a lot higher this year uh, for all of those reasons I mentioned. Um, and I think it's a bit like the, you know, the high street in general. You know, the, if you look at the high street retail model and look at some of the brands in the past that were selling, um, you know, like uh, it was Philip Green and the Arcadia Group, like Top Man, Top Shop, Burton's, Dorothy Perkins, you know, he was the king of the high street. Uh, and that's all gone now and it's been taken over by ASOS and Pretty Little Things and all those online stores um, you know, for the gym goers, gym shark. Um, and and it's, they're taken over. Obviously, there's always going to be some high street estate agents without doubt, but whether they're going to be profitable and, and doing well you know people might have a make a living but you know it's not going to be a, a really good income and i think it's a bit like travel agents you know you're still going to find the odd travel agent on the high street but there isn't lots of travel agents available compared to you know five years ago and, and it's happening in all industries you know the banks are closing their branches um shops are closing their branches so you know i think things are changing and you know if you look at some of the the, you know the bigger businesses like country, right? you know they were they were you know going out of business they were rescued by the Connells group um but if Connells have got the same model they're probably going to go the same way I, you know Connells is a good business it's probably a better run business and some great people there but ultimately it doesn't matter how good those people are you know if the model's not right you know there's not much you can do I, mean, I, I I'll give you an example of, of a business that was um take Debenhams they were a great business, a great brand. They've been around for a couple of hundred years. Great products, great staff, great service, great reputation. Everything was great about the business, um, but the model was wrong. It was a you know a typical high street retailer, and that business model wasn't any good. And so it doesn't matter how good the staff are. You know, look at blockbusters. It doesn't matter how good the staff were there, how good the premises were, or how good the product was. If people don't want to rent dvds and take cassettes you know that business is going to survive um so it doesn't matter how big the business is it could be you know nokia everyone had a nokia phone blackberry and that business is gone and you know i was like thinking oh our business is different and i'm sure blackberry and nokia all thought that um so my my views are if, if these businesses don't change the model their days are numbered um and then if we look at, there's another sustainability model, it's obviously what I call the pay up front model, the low cost model. That's not viable. I mean, you know, the, the graveyard of, of, of business that have tried it. I mean, I've put a few here, but there's literally loads, doorsteps, tepolo, 
Um, E-move, you can see there, um, you know, went into administration. Easy property recently, and that's the third time for easy property. You know, it was didn't work the first time, and it was taken over by uh, which is what now it's called the Nurture Group, which is inspiring a country and a guild. That didn't work, um, and then it went to the Evolve Partnership, and they've gone into liquidation. Uh, purple bricks, and we all know the story of purple bricks and what's happening there. It's now that the sale and the share price has just, you know, gone gone through the floor. Um, and it doesn't work. And I can talk from personal experience. I took a license for easy, easy property. And at one stage, I thought, well, I can have a high end brand with one country, the mass market brand. And I thought maybe there's people that do want a you know, low cost budget brand. You know, and we tried it. £699 to sell your house. People weren't that interested. Um, you know, we actually did the first month for free. Still, people weren't interested because people aren't stupid. They know that if it's cheap, there's a catch. Um, and you know, people aren't looking for the cheapest. If we all wanted the cheapest, we'd have the cheapest uh, car or the cheapest clothes or the cheapest everything, you know, um, I was to say flights, and there was a budget airline that's just gone out of business as another example. But, you know, people, you know, people have got iPhones, you know, they're not the cheapest phones you can buy. So people want value for money they're, they're, and they're happy to pay for it. Um, there is always going to be a market for people looking for the cheapest. And there's also a market people are looking for the best, and there's obviously a bit in the middle, but it's certainly not going to dominate. Um, but you know, that isn't a viable option anymore. And this is the problem. I don't think those models are fair to the employees. Like the traditional models where the you know the, the fees have gone down and the income to the business has gone down, and the business owners are having to cut costs, they're having to cut you know the marketing spend, they're having to make people redundant, they're having to cut staff wages. Uh, and if people are leaving, they're not replacing them. So that means that the people who are left have got more work to do. They're, they're trying to cover for other people. Um, and, you know, they're worried about their jobs or, or their salaries and, and, you know, their cost of living has gone up. Um, and then the danger is that these companies, when they're cutting back on their marketing spend, it means they're probably going to get less listings and therefore less sales. And then, you know, there's less money coming in. They've got to cut back it. again. It's a downward spiral. But... You know, these these eight, there's the individual employees are getting extra work for, for no extra money. And the same with the online models, the purple bricks and the, and the other ones where it's all about cost. They've got to keep their costs low to offer a low, you know, low cost product to the consumer. And that means that they can they're paying the agent less, but but also it's got to be a high volume, high turnover. So these agents are working harder than ever uh, for less money. And then ultimately, it's not fair for the clients. You know, the people who are selling their houses, when the agent's working for the traditional model and, you know, there's less staff, so, and then the agent's got to cover, you know, more, more appointments and more viewings, it's not going to give them time to look after those clients and provide the marketing they need and the support and the advice, and certainly not with the online models, although, you know, some of those sellers might not uh, expect a better service when they're paying new fees. But, you know, these clients are missing out. They're not getting great marketing. And if they had great marketing, they'd get a better price for their house. They get more support, be less stress about better communication. So I, I just don't think it's fair for the clients and I don't think it's fair for the employees. Um, so the problem with the UK agency at the moment, the fees are low, which means the salaries are low, which means the service standards are then low because you know there's not enough hours in the day. That means the public perception of the state agency is low and the reputation for the industry is low. So you know, why do these problems exist? Um, you know, when you're paying low salaries, you're not going to attract top talent. You know, when companies are offering salaries of 18 grand a year basics, you know, they're attracting young, inexperienced people. Some of them have just left school, never even bought a house. Um, you know, there's, you know, and then some of these, some of these uh, uh, companies employ apprentices because it's cheap. Um, and again, you're not going to get great talent with these low salaries. And there's no exams, no qualifications, no licensing, no experience, and, and there's no barriers to entry. So literally anyone can become an estate agent. And this is the worst bit. Very little training is provided. You know, I know when I first started, there's very little, and that's a very common theme that you just left. There's the phone, there's the chair, come with it, show someone around the house. Um, and, and, you know, most estate agents are now having to cut back on costs, which means they're cutting the salaries and the trainers, they say the marketing. And that's just a downward spiral, which means, you, you know, the results are lower and then you know, there's less income coming in. You've got to cut more costs. So, you know, one of my 
driving forces. And I've got two main driving forces. We might have to time to, to, to discuss the other one, but one of my driving forces is to help raise the standards in the state agency. So what is the solution? I'm going to have a glass of water because you can hear my voice is drying up. Typically <clears throat> as well, Sean, you find that if they're paying their negotiators a lower fee, but they're the people who do the viewings, and ultimately the vendor can end up suffering from that because they get someone who's inexperienced going around that property and not a professional. It can be someone yeah. who's on an £18,000 salary who started two weeks ago, and they might be going around to view a £750, £1 million house, and it's not fair it's to them. Yeah, and, and the guy who, who they met, the guy who's on the market appraisal evaluation, who they thought, yeah, this guy is experienced, yeah. he's not ever what we're talking about, never see him again. Never goes on the property. <laughs> so how can we improve the industry? I want to get back on track. Um, you know, one, we need to provide a higher income and higher earnings to attract top talent. You're not going to attract top talent paying 20 grand a year basics or even 30 grand, you know. Um, that's why good people are leaving the industry and we're not attracting good people into the industry. And then training. We need to provide better training. Um, you know, some people are just going on a course once a year. You know, I'm talking about some of our agents uh, they are constantly learning. They're spending an hour a day listening to a podcast or listening to um, a YouTube video or, you know, maybe of a, 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 um, a, a training uh, platform. So, you know, standards have got to be raised through training and attracting top talent. Um, so, oh, I've gone back to the beginning somehow. I don't know how to do that. Um, let's go back to where Get I was. To your face again. Uh, higher income. There you go. Um, so let's talk about self-employed model. We talked about the other two models. You know, so this is relatively new um, in the UK, but it is not a new idea because most of the rest of the world um, have this model. Um, this is, you know, in Australia and America, South Africa, in fact, every, you know, the European countries, the, where the agent, the individual, runs their own business and they're under an umbrella brand. Um, so that, that's a company and the agent and the company split the fee and the company will provide various support services um, and that could be from a CRM system and marketing tools, administration, sales progression, you know, training platforms, um, lots of you know, support for, for, for the agents and in exchange there's a split of the, the commission. So I just want to quickly touch on what the advantages are and the disadvantages of this model. Um, so look at the disadvantages. So anyone who wants to become a self-employed estate agent has got to accept there's going to be no basic salary. You know, the benefit of being employed is, although it's not a great salary, at least you know what you're getting at the end of every month. So when you're self-employed, you're running your own business and uh, you, you basically eat what you kill. So if you get a good result, you're going to earn more money. But if you don't sell any houses, you're not going to earn any money. And potentially there's no income for the first three to six months. So you need to, you need to be aware um, that you know, even if you put a house on the market in the first week, they might not sell you know for a month or two months. And if, when it is sold, it could take two, three, four, five months to go through. So you might not be earning any money for three to six months. And then you have to deal with the whole process. Whereas you know, in a traditional estate model or the online model, someone else might be generating the market appraisals, um, and someone else might be dealing with the viewings, and someone else might be dealing with the sales progression. Um, you know, you, you might just do listing and valuing or just do viewings. Um, and then an agent are responsible for generating their own market appraisals, whereas, you know, in a traditional model, that might be done by someone else. And you've also got some costs. You've got car, laptop, phone, marketing, stationery. Although most people probably have got a car, laptop and phone, but, you know, there are, there are definitely costs to consider. Um, and I want to just look at the advantages now. Um, so the advantage of being self-employed is higher earning potential. You've got flexible working hours to suit your lifestyle or, or your client's lifestyle. Um, so if a client wants an, an evening appointment or weekend appointment, you might work a little bit later, but then you might start a little bit later the next day. It means you can go to the gym in the morning or you can go for a coffee with friends or drop the kids off at school. And, and you're not stuck in an office working a nine to five. There's, there's no targets or KPIs or you know, uh, reports you've got to think about, management reports. And you're not being micromanaged. Um, obviously, you might have your own targets you set yourself, but you're not being told to hit certain targets. This is great. You can deal with clients that you want to deal with and the listings you want to deal with. There's nothing more empowering than when you think, I don't want to deal with this client. He's looking for the cheap fee. I'm not going to do a cheap fee. Or they want too much money. I'm going to walk away. When you're an employee, you're under a lot of pressure to hit certain targets and take any listing. You know, 
even if it means cutting the fee, even if the price is too high, even if the seller is not motivated. Whereas when you're working for yourself, you can just walk away. And there's an old saying that not all business is good business. And uh, in my view, a good estate agent knows the difference between good business and, and bad business and, and walks away. Um, I see this as an advantage as well, seeing the transaction from start to finish. Um, and, uh, you know, a ready-made business platform with low cost and low setup. You know, you know if you are, you are going to set your own business, there's a lot of costs and a lot of things to do. But, you know, uh, the, you know the, the reason for joining a, uh, an umbrella model is that it's all done for you. Um, so what can you earn? Most employed estate agent models um, pay a percentage, you know, that could be between 30% and 80%. Some are probably higher and lower than that, but the majority are in that range. And just as a rule of thumb, that if you're going to get a lower percentage, you know, in the 30 or 40%, you're going to find that you, the agent will get more support and the agent will have less cost. So the company will be providing a lot more support, whether that's admin support, sales profession, you know, create, generating the business. Um, and the, and the, and the business or the company takes bears a lot of the costs. On the flip side of that, if you're going to get with 60, 70, 80%, chances are the agent will bear more of the costs and probably be less support. Um, so that's something just to bear in mind, and that's what you've got to weigh up, you know. Um, so if you want to, you know, it's a common question, what can I earn? I guess that, that the answer to that is down to three important things. You know, what is your average fee going to be? How many transactions you're going to have and what your commission split is? So let's quickly look at some examples. Um, I just want to point out there that it's really important that you decide what your average fee is. Don't fall into the trap of, of, of thinking, well, what's the average house price in my area? Well, the average house price is 300,000, so I'm going to base it on 300,000. And the average agent in my area is charging 1%, I'm going to charge 1%. You've got to remember that you decide your average fee and then decide what property price you want to deal with as an average. So, for example, you might the average house price in your area might be 300,000, but you might decide you want to deal with that. A five hundred thousand pound price on average. So you might deal with one at six hundred. You might deal with one at four hundred. But on average, it's five hundred. So deal, you know, decide what your niche market is going to be. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're only charging one percent or half a percent. You can charge two and a half percent, one percent, two and one one and a half, two percent. You know, I always charge two and a half percent, and I've never met anyone who's had a problem paying that. There's obviously a reason they pay that, and obviously that's down to what I do and the marketing and the strategies and whole load of stuff which we haven't got time to go into today but do bear in mind that when you provide a better service and do provide better results sellers will pay for professional fee in this industry and in every industry whether that's in flights there's going to be people who fly first class some will be premium and some of the economy whether it's shopping industry you've got the expensive shops like marks and spencers and waitrose there's cheaper shops and then um, I, I, I was going to say IKEA, not IKEA, but you know, the supermarkets, Audi, and then you know the middle of the range might be know, Tesco's or Sainsbury's. But every industry, you know, there's cars, holidays, whatever you look at, you know, not everybody's looking for the cheapest. And if you can provide a better service and better results, they'll pay a professional fee. But what you can't do is do exactly the same as a one percent agent does, and then charge two and a half percent. You've got to do more, and obviously we can talk about that another time, but. Um, so focus on what your average fee, what average fee you want. So, you know, some of our agents focus on, on achieving an average fee of 10 grand. So they might deal with a 500,000 pound house on average and charge 2% on average, and their average fee is 10 grand. But you can see um, our final country Midlands uh, region, uh, their average fee is about 20 grand. That's, take, that's taking into consideration all our agents in that area and all our listings on average, it's 20 grand. Um, and that's over the last 12 months. So let's look at a quick example. I'm trying to be as quick as I can. Got a lot to go through. So look, let's just say the average fee is six grand you want to work on. And that could be a £300,000 house at 2% or a £400,000 house at 1.5% or £600,000 house at 1%. You decide your average fee you want to get and how you're going to get it uh, based on what you want to charge and what price range you want to deal with. How many transactions are you going to do, transactions you're going to do a month? So let's, let's say two in this example. And then what commission split are you on? You might be on 70%. So in that example, 70% of 6,000 is 4,200. So you're charging six grand, you get 70% of it, that'd be 4,200 in that example. So if you did two transactions a month, that's 8,400 over 12 months, that's over 100 grand a year. Now, let's just say your average fee, you did half of that, instead of six grand, it was three grand. So obviously your income would be half, it'd be 50 grand. Or instead of uh, doing two transactions at six grand, you did one transaction at six grand average fee, you know, it's half obviously, 
another 50 grand. And, but it's worth noting that if you sell a million pound house and you charge two and a half percent, which you can do, um, and I know people say, oh, not in my area, people won't pay two and a half percent. Guarantee they do. And every time someone says that in an area, there's always an agent that charges two, two and a half percent. Um, you know, you can work out what 70% was, but you know, on our model, the agent would earn 80% and they would earn 20,000 pounds for selling that one house. That's a million pound house, two and a half percent, uh, 20 grand for selling a house. And this self-employed um, model is really designed to keep volume down, isn't it, Sean? You know, to give a better service per client. So you don't have to take on, you know, there'll be some of you out there that are taking on 10, 15 properties a month. Really, you're only looking at, you know, a quarter of that maximum and you can give much better service, but still produce the income. And that's what some of our, they, they limit the number of listings they deal with. Some of them will be eight, some of them will be five, some it's nine. They say, I only deal with nine listings at any one time. And the clients like that. They feel a bit more exclusive. And, uh, and some of our agents, when you ring them, if they've got nine listings and that's their maximum, you ring and say, can you put my house in the market? They'll say, no, I've got nine. I only deal with nine. But, you know, when I sell one, I can put you on my waiting list. Um, and, you know, I, I've actually got an open house on Saturday and I'm expecting some offers. And when that sells, I perhaps give you a call on Monday and I might have a gap for you. And, and people like that. You know, the sellers want to deal with an agent that's limited. By yeah. number. I just want to quickly touch on some examples. Our top agent last year with the property experts banked in fees, 328000 in gross commission income. So that's fees. And their personal income is over 250000 um, The top agent in the final country in our Midlands region uh, banked. 425,000 and that's one person um, on his own um, and the commission splits are different in finding countries so although that was a higher amount the, 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 the business pays a lower percentage and obviously we can tell you more of that if you're interested um, they get a higher percentage with uh, the property experts but obviously the agent has to do more and pay more so it's a sort of a swings and roundabout situation there um, I just want to mention this. I did some interviews with some of our agents. Not even, I don't think this was even last year. I think it was a year before, like 2021. I'm going to do more interviews um, with some of our agents because, you know, it's incredible what, what agents are earning. So you can see there, if you go to that YouTube channel, I'm sure you earn £100,000 as an estate agent. Brendan talks about how he earned £100,000 in one month. Now, obviously, he doesn't earn that every month, but, you know, in one particular month. Uh, so that wasn't last year. That was 2021, um, and you know he probably banked 140,000 uh, pounds that month. Um, and there's Damien; he banked 40, uh, he earned 40 grand. Uh, Terry, 50 grand. Uh, uh, Sam, another 40 grand there. So you know they're, they're telling their story on how they how they made that sort of money in a month. And it's uh, very interesting. So worth a watch. So you can see how long that was 25 minutes. So um, have a look. And then I just got this from our accounts department. I said, just give me a quick spreadsheet of what people have earned. Um, and this is a monthly, it's what people have earned in a month. So you can see at the top there, someone's earned, well, that's their fees, they've banked 23,000. They've earned 70% of that, that's 16 grand in a month. Someone's earned bank 12 grand, they've earned eight, 12. And you can just go down there. Someone's banked 20 grand, they took home 14,000. Another one, yeah. 19,000. There's one there, 28 and 19,000. Yeah. 19,000. But you can see there's 10, 20, another one at 20, 16, you know, and here's a low one, only bank 10 grand, they own seven. But, you know, I've obviously crossed out all the names there to, to, to avoid uh, <laughs> people's names there. But um, obviously, the next question for a lot of people is what's all the cost? What have I got to pay? So if you're setting up a business as a self employed estate agent, you've got to pay, you've got to be a limited company. It's 12 pounds, the property redress scheme, PRS 135. Obviously, you could be the property ombudsman, HMRC, land, land, uh, registration, French money laundry, and the AML, it's 340. ICO, information permissions office, 40 quid, professional indemnity, public and liability, insurance, 300. That's rough. That will depend on your age and your area of various other things, but that's a rough. The sale signs, 200 quid. The DBS chair, that's a criminal chair. We want to make sure everyone's not criminal when they join 18 grid and then it's the initial in stationary marketing is a starter pack so ballpark 1245 pounds um and then you've got some ongoing costs um and these are things to consider you've got a license fee transaction fee marketing costs so with the property experts and all the different businesses all the different self-employed models are different so you can do your research on this but 
you know, just as an example, our license fee is 150 pound a month. It's a transaction fee. So that comes off the fee that's uh, per transaction. We have a national advertising fund. So again, it comes off the transaction. It goes into a national pot for the agents uh, to be spent by the agents. And there's also a, uh, the, our foundation. So we, we believe in giving to local charities and supporting our communities. One of our core values is we care. And so we want to put something back. So that comes off the transaction. And it's, you know, the sellers like it as well. We take part of the fee will go into helping local, you know, less fortunate people, whether it's homeless people or... Um, and the company matches that, don't they? So it's yeah. a total of 50, 50 pound per transaction. You can give back to local charities within an area, which... Sounds fantastic on evaluation. You know, people really, really like to see people giving back on that kind of stuff. 100%. And you know, the agents decide where that goes. You know, or all their clients um, can decide if they've got. You know, uh, maybe it's family members who suffered, you know, uh, cancer, or you know, and they want to give donate them to that charity or local hospice. We can donate to those charities. Um, obviously. I want to be transparent. We're not the only self-employed model in, 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 the, in the UK. There are other ones. I'm just going to give you a selection to look at. Um, uh, you know, this is the luxury one. So there's a couple of examples I've already mentioned. Fine and Country, great brand, great coverage. It's an international brand. Um, and, you know, obviously you can, you know, I would say to anybody who's, who's considering going self-employed, do your research and, and talk to a number of self-employed models, including Fine and Country. Tyra Nash, another great brand. Dealing with the luxury end of the market, you might have seen him on TV. Um, Tyron actually used to work with me in, in one of our fine and country offices, and uh, so you know, I'm really pleased and proud to see him. You know, set up on his own and, and go on to do great things. So congratulations to him, and you might want to see what they offer. Um, another great brand is, is the Luxury Property Partners. Um, again, Damien was with me at Fine and Country, and uh, he wanted to go on and set up on his own, so he joined. So luxury property partners actually did that with my son Tyler Newman, ironically, and my daughter Summer and her boyfriend Matt, who um, you may know they have the luxury property, uh, sorry, the yeah luxury home show on YouTube, um, and so they've obviously done that. Um, and then you've got some American models as well. Um, there's Remax, one of the biggest in the world, I think. Um, I just found that some of these American models haven't translated as well to the UK. Yeah, a number have come and failed. And I think Century 21 have joined and Colwell Banker and, you know, but, you know, they're, they're worth considering. Um, so there's Remax, there's EXP, uh, EXP another good uh, brand there. They've, they've done great things in the UK, expanded very, very quickly. Um, so you might want to talk to them. Uh, Keller Williams, I'm a big fan of Keller Williams. Certainly in, in the estates, I've been to their family reunion. I know a lot of people are with Keller Williams. They've got a great culture of their, you know, the, uh, Gary Keller's books. Um, there's mixed views in the UK. You need to make your own mind up. All I'm saying is these are the companies are out there, um, and uh, you know, and there are others as well. Um, so you know, do 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 your research and compare. Um, and you know, when you're looking at these models, here's a couple of things you might want to consider. Um, one is what is the percentage split, and I would say this isn't the most important thing. You know, um, you know, the percentage split with foreign countries are lower. Some of the agents are, you know, are, are getting a lot more um, branding, you know, well-known, it's a well-known brand, um, great marketing material, um, there's less cost for the agent because the company bears a lot of the cost, um, and they can justify good fees, two and a half percent or 20 grand fees. So if you get a lower percentage of a bigger fee, you can actually be better off. Um, and obviously the brand gets helps get you know get get to business as well. So the, the percentage is one element, but it's not the most important thing. You've also got to look at the support you're going to get from the business. Um, some of the self-employed models, there is very little support, and others there's lots of support. Um, the training and the coaching behind that business, the marketing material, the CRM system, you know, you know, there's some great CRM systems out there and some, some terrible ones. So you don't want to join a company that's got terrible CRM. You know, what prop tech do they supply? You know, Home Search, Akaboom, Swift, Data Life, I don't want to go into what all these are, but, you know, you need to be asking what prop tech tools do I get? Very important part is the culture. What's their vision, their mission, their core values? Do they align with your values? And is there a strategy or a process to follow or are you just left on your own? So do your research. My advice is do, 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 do speak to existing agents. Um, I put there, bear in mind some 
and these agents do get paid to recruit you. So, you know, you've got to bear, bear that in mind that uh, some of them said, oh, yes, wonderful, come and join, come and join, and join, because they, they get paid extra. But, you know, uh, so sometimes take it with a pinch of salt. I mean, you speak to people who have, have left that business, um, but when you talk to people who have left, who are saying, oh, it was terrible, it was terrible, was it the business they left or was it the agent? You know, so again, you know, just look at it from both sides, uh, but do do your research. So, sure, you know, I've just had a question come through just yeah. whilst we're on this subject. So, uh, someone's asked, uh, as a company, we'd be charging uh, for an administration fee, uh, and essentially we charge from that additional to our thirty percent. So he's asked why why do we not charge forty percent um, and cut away with the essentially the administration fee. Yeah, um, I think the, th the problem is there is if we start going into the detail, we will be here all night. I've got, I mean, I'll do try and do a quick answer to that question. And the answer is because one agent might have one transaction and another agent might have 10 transactions and each transaction costs us money. We pay more to right move, you know, for, for each listing, you know, what we pay to right move. And it depends on which, which agent you talk to, but, you know, it could be 1500, 1600 pounds a month. And depending on what, what um, products you have, but that's based on an average, and I think it's about 21 or 22 properties. Um, and so roughly speaking, it's like 60 or 70 quid per property per, per month on right move. And then there's obviously the marketing, there's the, yeah. there's equal the packs, there's, uh, well, I'll get through some of the other stuff, but each listing costs the business money. So and it's a set to... amount. It doesn't matter on the size. So, you know, in theory, if you were to sell a, a property at 1 million, it's still the same uh, the, the same amount of the work goes in it than if you sell a property at 100,000, but you would actually make a better percentage. So rather than us charging you extra, you know, mm -hmm. you'll actually get a bit, bit a bigger benefit from a higher percentage. So, so um, but it's a good question. It's a valid point. And, it, you know, different businesses, will, some will say, well, we'll give you 50%. Um, but we're going to do all of this for you um, and, not, and there's no extra charges. So you just got to look at all the models, weigh them all up. Uh, we want it to be fair and transparent and, and you know, for, for everyone involved. Um, we think that's the fairest way to pay per transaction. Guys, okay. um, you, you're asking a couple of questions. Great. We'll answer them at the end. But yes, we'll make sure we can get uh, some form of these slides out to you uh, at the end of the presentation so you guys can have all the info for you. I'm not going to be able to answer all the questions. <laughs> like, there'll probably be more questions at the end than, than I'm answering. All I can do is give you a quick overview of the model and you know what everyone's doing and what we're doing. But obviously, after this, this is for, for some people just sort of a first step in finding out a little bit more. To go into the detail, then obviously that's the next step to do the research and the due diligence. And, and obviously, we can talk to people or send the perspectives at the end. But um, now, I said this isn't going to be a sales pitch. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I just want to give you a quick overview of some of the things that are different with what we do as property experts. But again, if you are interested in finding out more, there's a whole load of other stuff you'll need to know. Uh, this is just a sort of a taster and a quick overview. But yeah, you will need to speak to someone to find out more. But in a nutshell, the model is all about the personal brand. You know, um, it's about, so the agent, it's, it's the individual. It's their name and their picture. That's their brand. The property experts is, is probably more of a secondary brand. And the reason for that is people want to deal with people. When they see a face on a bit of marketing material or for sale sign or anywhere, it automatically builds trust. It's just a natural instinct that you're more likely to trust a person rather than a faceless company that you, know, you don't know who they are or who you're going to be dealing with. So it's all about, so we believe in the personal brand. And then all the marketing material is personalized to that agent and there's a whole load of marketing material. Uh, I might touch on a bit of it later, but it's all there to help you win business. The commission split is 70%. High performers or team leaders get 80%. There's no post-code restrictions. You can list any property in any area. There is a prestige brand if you want to deal with more expensive properties. And um, We've got a success blueprint. We've got success coaches. We've got a social media coach. And we've got systems, processes, and strategies to help you be more productive. And we've got sales progression if they're using our recommended solicitor. And we've got a landline number and 24 hour call servicing. And, and we'll help you build a team. There's lots more to tell you, but as I said, I don't want to make it into a sales pitch, but it gives you a bit of a, a taste on some of the differences with us as a property expert. Um, I mentioned support. Like some businesses, there's literally one or two people supporting, or maybe three. You know, we've got a massive support team. There's four people there 
that, that are there to help the agent with compliance, administration, and various things um, with listings and sales. And um, there's four people <clears throat> that are there to help you with, <clears throat> you know, productivity. So, you know, that's coaching and training and support and mentoring. We've got Jim Harris, our managing director, we've got 30 years of experience. Kelly Bailey, she's wonderful. She's really, really good. And, and she's there to help and support our, our agents. We've got a new coach starting next week. I can't give his name yet. Um, and then there's obviously me. So there's four people there you can talk to for advice, training, support, and you know, and you know, and I, you know, we've got those strategies. We can help you be more productive. So you know, for me, that's a really important part of what we do. We want our agents to be successful, to earn a great income, achieve their goals, and provide great service to the clients and get great results for the clients. And and that's what we do through through the coaching and training that we do and support. Um, and there's obviously other people, we've got sales progression, uh, Lizzie does the design and marketing, social media, and I haven't even put all the people on here, you know, from IT support and, and various other people, um, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the support team. Oh, and this is some of the tools we provide, we've got a really good CRM system, and um, it's designed specifically for estate agencies, and there's a mobile app, we, we provide home search, there's a prospecting tools, the UK database, and does a reporting, uh, part of reports, we've got 400 training videos, we provide HIPLA, which is an AML check, creates a digital legal pack, and we pay for that. Um, we've got a marketing hub with hundreds of templates. Um, <clears throat> and if you scan that QR code quickly, because I'm going to move this slide with your phone, just get your camera and scan it. You now we provide a template for a 24, sorry, 12, 24, and 32 page brochure. Um, James, maybe you could I'll drop, drop a it link in to. Yeah, I'll drop it in now in, for everyone. I'm just going to move on. But, you know, we want to give our agents all the tools to, and provide great marketing for our clients. And too many estate agents, there's no brochure or it's an A4, two-sided. You know, we want really good brochures selling the area, selling the lifestyle, the maps, the, the floor plans, the, you know, lots of information. Um, and to do that, you can't do it in a two-page document. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to whiz through this, but I just want to give you a quick overview of some of the marketing material. You can see on the left-hand side there, we've got... Um, business cards for sale signs and some leaflets and flyers. There's a premium brand there, so a prestige brand, um, and then some sort of merchandise as well. I'm just going to whiz through these slides because there's too, too much marketing to, to spend any time on here all day, but I just want to give you a quick overview of some marketing examples. I mean, this is a four-page booklet, 10 ways to attract more buyers. This is perfect for when you're knocking on the door of a house that's for sale with another estate agent, saying, I know it's just selling a house, Here's 10 ways to attract more buyers. Hope you find it useful. You don't need to say anything else, but you know, those 10 tips, uh, the chances are their agent won't you know, do that or won't be able to do that, doesn't know how to do videos or social media or doesn't understand open house strategy or home staging. Um, so you know, you just deliver that leaflet. There's some useful information. You know, they could say to their agent, can you do these things? And maybe they will, maybe they won't. But you're not there trying to get the house on the market. You're providing value. You're giving useful information to a seller. Um, and then this is just a document that you can show them your example of your results. You know, you put an example of a house and say it's on the market with another agent for 70 days, 75 days, sold by property experts in, in uh, you know, you know, just 70 days, sale agreed by the property experts. So you can obviously personalize that, put your listings on or the listings that you've sold on there. Um, moving checklist, again, great when you're talking to houses. Or the owner of the house is on the market, another agent to say, notice you're selling, thought you might find this useful. Really, really good checklist there. I'm sure they'll keep that. But the nice thing is they've got something they're going to keep with your name on it, your phone number on it, your picture on it. And they're going to think, oh, that was helpful. He was, he was uh, you, know, you know, I haven't got this from my current agent. It's just uh, that icebreaker, tool. isn't it? Yeah, it's just, just something to give them. I mean, I've got hundreds of these things. I'm just going to whisper, this is the... Find your ideal home by searching off market properties. We, we use home search for, for this. But when people search, it sends us an email of, of what they're looking for. And we can then send letters to those homeowners to see, say we might buy for their house. But um, these are digital assets for every event or you know, important dates. We're providing you know, Mother's Day, Easter, March, World Book Day, St. Patrick's Day. These are useful things for your social media platforms. These are some direct mail leaflets and canvassing cards and invitation for open house and other sale agreed, new to market. So some of the canvassing cards, some are direct mail. Well, let's say there's hundreds of those different versions. And this is a great thing is that when you log in to this you know, marketing hub, an agent, 
these are already populated automatically with your photograph, your name, your photo, your email address. Um, all you've got to do is drag and drop in the photos of the house. I just want to touch quickly on culture. Um, I think that's really important. Uh, I'm just going to quickly read our, our vision. Um, <clears throat> So our vision is to revolutionise UK estancy market and raise the standards in the industry. Uh, also to improve the public's perception of estate agents and make it an aspirational career by helping property, property experts provide a first class service and achieve outstanding results for their clients. And our mission is to give property experts the training, the coaching, mentoring, support and the tools to grow their personal brand and build their business bringing the best in the industry together to be part of a community that helps and supports each other and shares best practice. Um, I just want to quickly touch on our core values because you, know, you can see core values align with ours. This is what our agents believe in and, and follow. Um, we learn, we're constantly learning, and, sorry, constantly improving, um, expanding our knowledge and learning new skills. We allocate time for professional development to be trusted advisors. We take responsibility. We take ownership for our business and responsibility for what happens. We are in control of our own destiny and the books start with us. We take action. We have clear goals and take action each day to achieve them. We make things happen by being proactive and we are focused on achieving outstanding results for our clients. We believe in ourselves and our purpose. We know that we can achieve anything we set our mind to. Uh, when we follow the process, the results will follow. We love what we do and we bring passion and enthusiasm to each day. We do our best and we have a positive can do attitude we are fun and we wear a smile and we care we care about our clients our colleagues and our community we care about the environment and the future we care about our family friends and our personal well-being and that's really important I mean, personal well-being is, is important okay so what does the ideal candidate look like so you know i've looked at all our agents and the most successful ones all share these characteristics and i'm just going to whiz through these very quickly First of all, they're all entrepreneurial. There's a big difference to someone who wants to be an entrepreneur and a business owner and be in control of their own destiny compared to someone who wants to be an employee and just wants to, you know, have a job. Um, so anyway, I won't go into the details of what an entrepreneur is, but you should know. And uh, but they're all ambitious as well. They want to. They want a good life. They want to experience the best things in life. Have a great lifestyle. Have great holidays. Have time with their family. Enjoy. You know, doing stuff and having fun experiences, maybe having a nice car and a nice house and, you know, just, just, they want the best and that's out there. Anyone can go for it, but you've either got to go for it and be ambitious or you've just got to settle for average. So, you know, they're very ambitious. They're proactive. Um, you know, it's, it's a shame that many estate agents are reactive. They're sitting in their office waiting for someone to walk in. They're waiting for the phone to ring. They're waiting for the email to come in from right move. That's being re reactive. Proactive agents are not waiting for anyone to walk into an office. And, and actually, less people are walking into offices. Less people are calling estate agents. They're not ringing up, getting people on a mailing list anymore. They're looking at the properties on portals or social media sites. Um, and they don't even need to email the agent anymore, you know. Um, so, you know, they, they could just message them on WhatsApp or social media. Anyway, the proactive ones are going out there, talking to people who are on the market, networking with their community, going delivering leaflets, creating video content, using social media, getting results. And, they're, you know, they're all learners. They all understand the importance of learning and improving and developing and you know, getting better skills to be better negotiators or better... Uh, better at marketing. When I say negotiating, I'm not talking about the job title negotiation, I'm talking about negotiating offers or negotiating their fees, their skills. Um, and they, they listen to podcasts when they're driving to an appointment. They listen to, they're reading books and learning about business. Um, and this is really important. They all understand the importance of content marketing. And these are three different things, content marketing, video, and social media. You know, I could spend an hour talking about content marketing. It's a massive subject and some people don't understand it. Well, they think they do. Video is one thing. Social media is another thing. You know, we could spend an hour talking about those two subjects. But the top agents understand how video can, instead of talking to one person, they can talk to thousands. Uh, and with social media, how they can reach targeted uh, buyers and sellers. So, you know, it's a really important thing that people, if they don't know, they understand the importance of it and they, they're prepared to learn those things. Um, so what's the idea of candidate look like? You know, there isn't necessarily a specific type. You know, I just want to give you a couple of examples. Uh, Miranda here joined, you know, I don't know, less than probably about 12 months ago. 
she had no estate agency experience. Now she was, she did have her own business. She was in the fitness industry. So she sort of knew about business and she was sort of her own boss, but she's just absolutely smashing it out of the park. You can see some of these um, open houses she's done, um, you know, in February um, and she's getting some fantastic results. Uh, and if you want to follow Miranda, she's on social media, follow on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. That's where all the top agents are. And if you're not doing it, follow those ones. You can learn from them, see what they're doing it, doing. Um, and then another one, Simon. Uh, Simon, again, no state agency experience, probably joined about a year ago. And you can see he's, there's a, video, a picture of him on TikTok and there's a sign that he's put up in a, on a roundabout. And, you know, look at the, look at the properties he's dealing with. £800,000, £2 million, £2 million. Some of the reviews he's had, he's, you know, just absolutely smashing it. But he's focused on the price bracket. He's, he's very clear on the type of property he wants to deal with and the service he's going to deliver and the fees he wants to charge. And people are now coming to him. You know, he sold that one. One of these at two million. Um, I can't tell you what it actually sold for, but his offer was over two million. I think he had an open house a week or two ago. He's had offers in excess of 2.4 million. So, like, if you're an eight, a seller and someone says, well, look, we could put offers over two million, now I'll give you two point, well, it's more than 2.4. I'm not going to give you the sale price, but I'm giving you an indication. Would you be happy to pay him two and a half percent? Yeah, of course. Like if you think you can save money and pay an agent one percent, and they end up at selling it for two million or one point nine or two point one, and you potentially lost three or four hundred thousand or more because you didn't have the right agent who's doing the right marketing and negotiate hard on your behalf with multiple buyers. Anyway, he's smashing it. But he's got a great strategy, getting great results, um, but no experience in state agency. So, what are our plans for the future? As a business, we want the biggest and the best self-employed model in the UK. We want to make a really attractive proposition that it's a no-brainer. I've looked at all the other models. I've taken the best bits from, from all of them and gone, you know, how can we make this better? And um, We've got an, uh, a new website launching next week on the 8th of March. And we're also launching the letting experts in April so that our agents who are dealing with sales can also deal with lettings. And that means that when they first start, they might be able to earn money sooner because you could get a house to rent this week, you could rent it next week, and you can earn a commission quite a lot quicker. And also you're building up a, a management portfolio. But there's definitely people out there who, who are, you know, just do lettings. They're working for a, a company as a letting agent, they're out listing or they're doing management. And I think, you know, I'd love to set up on my own, but we can't afford a website and all the marketing, all the compliance, all the hassle. And, the, you know, but we've got an end-to-end -end process, all the strategies, all the systems, all the prop tech, so agents can do this fully compliant with all, you know, uh, I don't want to go into any more detail, but if people want to know, we can talk about that um, in another webinar. Um, I think we're nearly at the end. If, if people are interested in knowing more about our model, they, if you get your phone out now and put a camera on, um, you can scan that QR code and that will give you a, a prospectus, like a page turner. Um, James, if you want to put that in the chat, maybe a link to that as well, so yeah. people can... Look at it. Yeah, I'll drop it in for you. Um, or if you want to have a chat with someone, uh, you might say, well, I want to book in a chat. You can just book a discovery of Paul. Um, again, scan that QR code uh, and you can book a 30-minute chat with one of our team and you know, ask all those other questions. Um, there's the front page of the, the um, prospectus. If you notice, my heading was next step there. And, and obviously, there's someone going down the steps there. Um, I can also, we'll also send you a link to a, a course I've done. It's a, it's a free course. It's about how many, how many videos? Is it about 20 videos, short videos, something like that? How to yeah. earn 100,000 pounds as an estate agent. Um, we're doing an induction course every month. Um, we've got one next on Monday. We've got 12 new agents starting next Monday. I think it's probably about near 20 in April and in May, probably more. Um, and we do a quarterly agent success day. So at the beginning of each quarter. So this one's the beginning of April. Um, and if people want to come along to that, um, they're welcome to come along and just get a feel and see what training we do, speak to some agents. Happy to give people an invite if uh, they want to know more about that. Um, with, yeah, I've got five minutes, you know, I'm trying to keep it within an hour. I've whizzed through everything. There's probably lots more to tell you, there's a lot more to know. But um, I know these were questions that were sent in before. Um, someone asked, how much money would I need? Well, I think I mentioned earlier, it was like 500 quid you know, up front, but you've really got to have enough money to, 
to fund yourself for the first six months, you know, you know, make sure you've got an income. So if you've got a partner and she's, he or she's got good income and you can afford not to have an, an income for the first six months, great. Some people have taken out business loans, you know, they put them by business loans and, you know, but ideally you'd, some people remortgage the house, but ideally you just need to have enough money to see you for the first six months. And bear in mind, you are some costs in six months, you might want to buy some leaflets and go buy for sales signs and do some marketing, Facebook ads, that sort of thing. So, you know, everyone's lifestyle is different. So you know how much you need for, to, to fund your lifestyle for six months, but it is about the short-term pain for the long-term gain, you know, Anyone who starts a new business, they're not going to make money in the first year sometimes, there's no profit. So there's an investment in yourself and you've got to believe and be confident. The nice thing is I've got a proven model, a proven strategy, and I can help you. If you follow the process, you'll be successful and you could be one of those people earning those sorts of amounts of money. Um, do I need a stage experience? Again, I gave some examples of people who joined us with no stage experience. Sometimes that's a good thing because they haven't got the bad habits and they're not used to the old traditional ways of just sitting in an office waiting for people to come into them. But if you've got, if you've got sales experience, that's good. If you've got, um, if you've had a business before, that's good. You know, it's that entrepreneurial spirit, that's discipline as well. You, know, you need to be disciplined to get out of bed and go to work, even though you haven't got to be in at nine o'clock and you haven't got anyone telling you to be there. It is discipline. Um, but yeah, we've got, we've got the process you can follow. When's the best time of year to start? It doesn't matter what time of year to start. Um, but if you're planning to start in six months or 12 months or even three years time, I would start doing the research now and start planning for your leaving your current career or your le, 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 uh, current business. And the more time you spend planning, I mean, you can spend three months just deciding which uh, self-employed model you want to join. Then you can spend three or six months planning your strategies and saving the money and preparing and learning and so, you know, I would say to plan ahead. And so you launch your business fully, full, with full knowledge, fully ready to go, and you will be more successful. Did you want to, are there any other questions or coming in? Yeah, there's a couple coming in. Um, so one of the questions was, uh, we'll run back over this to go through properly. Uh, can you do both the property experts and find a country at the same time? No, I don't know. I, I don't think it's right to do that because, you know, you've got to decide where your market is, you know. And if you look at Waitrose, they don't sell cheap stuff, you know. And, and when you fly first class, you can't say, oh, can I have a first class seat and have a cheap meal? And, and get, you know, you've got to be high end or you've got to be mass market. But, you know, once you've set your, your uh, niche market or had your target audience, focus on what client you want to deal with um no and you're spreading yourself too thin it's just i don't think it's right i think you're better off just you know we've got lots of agents and some prefer finding country and some prefer the property experts um <clears throat> and you wouldn't convince anyone in finding country to join the property experts and vice versa i mean they're different models different things and people like and, and each one of these other models i've mentioned they're all different and uh depends what, what fits you and your market and what you want to do and uh, what support you need as well <clears throat> um another question has just come in uh can you do it part-time and combine it with your current job um, um i don't recommend it <clears throat> i know some other models say they do but for me you just got to be all in you've just got to focus on you know what you want the danger is if you've got a part-time job you're trying to do a part-time job then you're trying to do a bit of this and you're trying to do that and this bit, like Get all in, do it properly, be 100% committed. And also you've got to think about, you know, what about your clients? They don't want to ring you up and you're working part-time doing something else as an Uber driver or something or work in a factory or in a coffee shop. Um, you know, they want you to say, let's, a buyer wants to ring you and say, I want to view the house in an hour and you need to be available to get taken around. And especially if it's a million pound house and you're getting paid 20 grand to sell it. Um, you can't say, well, no, I'm doing a good job. So it's possible. I don't recommend it. Uh, yeah. I, I would say if you're going to do it it would have to be the avoid round this would need to be your full-time role and if you needed to support yourself and supplement that with some income to tide yourself over for them tougher six months that makes sense uh and we'll we, you know we'll do everything to help you on that side of it but obviously uh is a self-employed role you're welcome to do whatever you want but so, you know, I think we, yeah james i think we've done, we've done it come to an hour now i don't want to go any more yeah, than an hour. um 
my voice is going. So there's probably lots more questions. Obviously, they can they can come to you, anyone else. But do you want to do the next slide? And, and we've got a couple yeah, of other. Course. Oh, do you want me to change? I'll press the button. Hang on. I just need to press this button. What is okay? Well, yeah, so we're going to try and run these webinars a little bit more consistently for everyone. Uh, and we're going to be running over the next month, one every Wednesday. Uh, and we're going to be covering different models. So we'll be sending these links out for anyone that would be interested. But there is a fine and country webinar being running on obviously a week today. We're also going to be doing one for the mortgage experts for anyone who's interested in getting to the advisor side of it. Um, and I'm also ironically looking for people to join us as recruiters and uh, the best people who make recruitment experts are <laughs> estate agents. <laughs> um, it's a very similar industry. So if it's something you've ever wanted to look at or get into, then yeah, we're going to be having that running uh, on the 22nd of March, which will be obviously the following Wednesday. Without giving too much away, <clears throat> you know, but, you know, the recruitment experts, that's again, it's a self-employed model. Your recruitment consultants earn 70%. Um, the mortgage experts, again, you know, there's a high income there, could be, uh, I think it's up to 80% of the case value for a mortgage advisor. Um, so, you know, you might want to, you know, a mortgage advisor, um, and you want to become a mortgage advisor, you might want to help on that. Or, or you can email Lisa. So the head details there, take a screenshot of that, and you've got the email addresses for, if you want to know more from Courtney or James, um, and a couple of others. Yeah, and then uh, well, the the lettings experts, which we're going to be rolling out very very shortly uh, to all of our current agents. But essentially, we'll be running that on the 29th, which will allow everyone just to have a better look at that model. So if you are either an estate agent that's really keen, so we talked about if you wanted to work part time because you're worried about the cash flow to start with, well, maybe the lettings expert might be a really good gateway for you to earn that quicker commission. Um, you know, there is a bit more legislation around it, um, but the lady we've got coming in will be absolutely dynamite. So she'll answer any questions on that. Um, and the auction expert. So that'll be running on the 5th of April. So uh, we are very, very lucky that we've sh Sean um, and uh, James McGing running this together. And the auction model not only gives you as a property expert an option to go into auctions, you know, if you're competing on fee, you can say you're not charging a thing. Um, I won't charge you a single penny, but that is a massive model. And as we know, the industry is massively changing very, very quickly. And that's going to be really, really key. I've just read something. It's a 34% increase in the last three or four months of auction yeah. properties, which is really interesting. I think it's, you know, one of the problems with the estancy industry and the, the model, you know, the, the transaction process is, you know, you, you find the buyer. And then it's, they've got to play for a mortgage and it drags on and there's the conveyance problems and there's the survey problems and it's then the buyer pulls out or the seller pulls out or there's a problem with the survey. They can't. Auctions become more and more popular uh, and this is an online auction opportunity. So our agents can, when they're you know, talking to a seller, they can talk about auctions. But this is a completely different model for people who want to be involved in not, not trying to list the properties, but actually talking to agents and helping them put their properties into an auction. But we'll, you know, obviously we'll explain more um, next week. Yeah. Um, last slide, I think. Did you yeah. want to? Um, I've just had one more question come through really quickly as well, which is, and it's a really good question. And to be honest with you, um, it's going to be really interesting to answer. But uh, someone's asked why they think the commission is so low compared to. Uh, other models outside of the UK, so you know Australia and USA, and I think it's a bit of a self self fulfilling prophecy because we we charge low fees, so therefore there's less commission. Yeah. You know, everyone's sat in offices, uh, well, and then yeah, I think uh, there's a number of reasons. You like it's embarrassing. The standards are so low in the UK. I mean, you know, and you don't know that until you go to America and Australia and see what they do. They work bloody hard. You know. They invest money in staging the house. They invest incredible amounts of money in the marketing of these properties. You know, they're available seven days a week. They're working in the evenings. They're doing multiple viewings and they're negotiating hard. Now, although in America they might charge 5%, you've got to bear in mind they're splitting that. So they might only get 2.5%. So there's no, there's no reason why in the UK you can't charge 2.5%. I always charge two and a half percent. I know a number of agents that charge two and a half, and people are happy to pay if you can explain what you do. And I think that's part of the problem. 
all we're doing generally in the stadiums in the UK is we're taking a picture and a floor plan, sticking it on right move and sitting there waiting for the phone to ring. Well, you can't justify any more than 1%. Well, when do people were using purple bricks because they were doing it for less than that, you know, a thousand pounds. Well, you know, but what people will pay for is your market, like the state agents, you need two, two important skills. This is what the seller will pay for. They want to pay for an expert in marketing and an expert in negotiation. So not an order taker. An order taker is 1%, half a percent, whatever, you know, just someone rings up, you want to view the house, show them around, you want to buy it? Yes. If they don't, if there's no interest, you say to the owner, drop the price. If an offer comes in and the owner doesn't accept, you say, oh, yeah, you should accept it. Earlier. That's terrible estate agency. The reason people, people use me and pay me 2.5% is because I do a fantastic marketing campaign that gets their a massive exposure to their property. And, and by the way, White Move is not a marketing campaign. We're talking about videos and social media and direct mail and a whole load of other stuff, digital, printed. Um, and then we culminate that in uh, you know, bidding war with buyers and in our financial situation where we're creating competition, forcing the price up and negotiating hard. You know, when, when you know, I earn my fee just on my negotiation skills and getting those buyers up, squeezing every last penny out of them. Not like with some estate agents are just order takers and saying, oh, we've got enough for this. Do you want to take it? No, well, what will you take? Oh, you know, it's terrible. But what I'm saying is people will pay 2%, you know, and more um, for, for good estate agency. But I think we're not, not most people aren't aware of what good estate agency look like. And, even, you know, you're just used to what you've seen and what you've learned. Um, but you don't know what you don't know. And I can assure most people that there's a whole new world out there of estate agency marketing that most agents don't do. And the great thing about that, if you start doing these things, you should to be well ahead of the competition because the standards are really low. You do all these things, you're going to be, you know, more people will use you, pay more, and you'll get better results, better service, and more business will come to you. Um, but anyway, I could talk about fees for a long time. It's a whole new subject. We talk about marketing, we talk about negotiation. Maybe in future webinars, I'll do a talk on on some of those really important subjects and help estate agents and add value. So, look, I'm waffling on. I uh, hope yeah. you found this useful. I hope you found it beneficial and there's some new, uh, information on it that help you decide what you want to do in the future. Um, if you want to scan that, there's, there's my link, uh, link tree and there's a few my social media. If you want to message me, follow me, uh, I'll, I'll try and put a bit more content on, on uh, YouTube that will help estate agents as well. But that's it. We've run over a bit. Um, and uh, if there's anything else, yeah, just message James or myself or anyone that we mentioned earlier. Um, thank you for your yeah, time. Really appreciate the last slide. <laughs> well, yeah, pretty much held on to everyone there. So, yeah, thank you very much, guys, for, for sticking with us. And uh, we'll, um, yeah, just drop us a message if you're interested in getting some more details. Great. All the best. Take care. Have a good evening. Cheers, everyone.